Each July 4th, Americans celebrate a singular event on a sweltering day in Philadelphia. 238 years ago yesterday, all 56 members of the Continental Congress signed the Declaration of Independence and a new nation was born. Here's how it was depicted in the film 1776. We are about to brave the storm in a skiff made of paper. That's a pretty large signature, Johnny. So Fat George in London can read it without his glasses. <laughs> All right, step right up, gentlemen. Don't miss your chance to commit treason. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Mr. Thomas Jefferson. North Carolina, Mr. Joseph Hughes. Stirring, certainly, but how accurate was Hollywood's version of the birth of our nation? Let's ask historian Kenneth C. Davis, author of the Don't Know Much About History series. We got it wrong, didn't we? Surprising, isn't it, <laughs> that Hollywood got, got the facts wrong? It's, it's actually a wonderful movie, and it has some great moments in it. Jo uh, John Cullum singing molasses to sugar to slaves is, uh, is a great moment. But uh, the 56 signers did not sign on the 4th of July. Only two men sign on that date because they had an inky, scratched-out piece of Thomas Jefferson's draft. Mm -hmm. John Hancock, the president, not in that big uh, a signature we know, and Charles Thompson, who was the Secretary of the Congress. Um, then the next day, it was over, and people started to celebrate. So when did the Congressional Congress actually sign it? When should we be celebrating? Well, the 4th of July is clearly the nation's birthday, although John Adams thought it would be July 2nd. Congress actually votes a resolution of independence on the 2nd. Mm -hmm. Adams go, goes home that night, writes to Abigail, this day will go down in history. We'll celebrate with pomp and parades and illuminations. He meant fireworks. He was right about that, just off by the date. Because when people saw the declaration, when it was finally published, and it said, July 4th, 1776, that became fixed as the nation's birthday, our birth certificate in a sense. It was today, I note, that, that, that uh, two copies were, the first two copies were sent out, July 5th, to New Jersey and Delaware, I think, by John Hancock. But, but there were, well, this was interesting to me, there were actually, there was a committee of five people who was supposed to write the declaration, right? But really, Jefferson did most of the work. Jefferson did the work. He, does, he wrote the de declaration on a handmade uh, laptop desk, the first laptop, in a sense, that he had designed. Um, he was given the job by the other four men, including John Adams, Ben Franklin, Roger Sherman of Connecticut, and Robert Livingston of New York. They all agreed Jefferson's the writer, let him do it. They made about 40 changes to the draft. Then Congress debated Jefferson's document for another two days and made another 40 changes, the most important of which was cutting out a reference to slavery, of all things. And that's a point we should always uh, come back to. So basically what was taken out of the copy was that then, what you're talking about. Yes. Jefferson complains that the King of England is preventing America from stopping the slave trade, which is disingenuous to be, uh, to be polite about it. It's taken out, Jefferson later says, it's taken out in deference to the men who owned slaves as well as the northern brethren who were making a great deal of money transporting them. And this is a reminder that these men who are talking about life and liberty and, and all these important values very few of them had clean hands when it came to slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, a man like William Whipple from uh, New Hampshire, for instance, he's described as a merchant. He was actually a sea captain going between Africa and the West Indies, in other, in other words, transporting slaves. We can't be too cynical about it. On the other hand, we have to be honest about it. Yeah, very quickly, what, they make a reference in the, in the film clip we saw to these men committing treason. Uh, were, did, any, did any of them uh, see repercussions because they signed the document? Well, of the 56 signers, uh, many of them lived long and prospered. Quite a few had homes burned, not necessarily, necessarily because they were signers, but because they were wealthy men with big, uh, prosperous homes, including... Uh, 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 William Floyd here in New, in New York, uh, his home was, uh, was used as a barracks and later destroyed. Um, very few of the signers actually suffered in the war itself. Well, even though we're technically celebrating the wrong day, it's always fun. Kenneth C. <laughs> Davis, thank you so much.